Good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I've started piecing together my first piece or my first block on the Roxy Journal of Stitchery project. So I thought I better turn the camera on before I go whoosh through this and um, forget to record. So my composition so far, of course we know it's reindeer or deer. Um, I'm bringing in some blues and they are all going to be connected to my jelly roll which gives me uh, a heap of colours from blue through to red and through to beige. That jelly roll I believe is um, from Moda and it's called Holly Woods. So I have put that down in my description so if I don't mention it again at least it's down in the description. So all I'm doing at this stage is putting some basic pieces of this jelly roll down. The only one I haven't put in yet is this stripe. It's not part of the jelly roll. It's a piece of fabric that I picked up at my local craft store, my quilt store, and there's the, um, the details. Okay, there's a heap of colours in this pack that um, this company has released and I think it's fairly current and that's a spot I picked up. I had um, all sorts of fabrics but I didn't have a nice you know a spot or a stripe and often you need that just to break your eye up because lots of florals are all stunning but it can be a little bit too much. So I just want to work out where I'm going to put some stripe. Um, I don't know. Let's just leave that for a minute. I have stamped onto some calico um, using Timber Brown Stays On ink. And I have this, um, when I was making Christmas cards, I picked up a couple of these. This, I think, is a company in Australia. Black, um, yeah, Dark Room Door. They do rubber stamps and... Um, I haven't really used it actually, but I've got it in my stash. So out it comes and there were two reindeer in it. So perfect. So I've stamped them and they're in. The other thing I noticed here is there's some references to postage and some fantastic little quotes around it. So my tag is going to be a postcard that maybe a kid sends to Santa or Santa sends back to me at the you know, for my Christmas. So that's the theme of the postcard tag. But I, that's a whole nother video, a whole nother story. That just sort of popped into my head when I was stamping these reindeer and saw those little elements there. Not sure when I'll make that postcard, but um, there'll be a postcard somewhere on the journal or on this bunting. I'm still going with the bunting and I'm still planning on um, somehow putting it together in a journal cover. I'm still working with the size that I spoke about in my first video, which was this huge cookbook, uh, nice and big. And I've torn down in preparation a heap of calico because it's nice and lightweight. I did go to my stash and I pulled out this beautiful antique linen, but I just don't have enough of it. And it's really heavy really stiff and I think I might be caught cursing it by the end of the project because it feels like it's got uh, a bleach or uh, not a bleach a starch in it so my thoughts is I use this as a feature fabric but to keep the weight down I'm going to stick with my calico muslin I've torn them all down and I think for each bunting piece where's my notes that I wrote in my last video <clears throat> Are they handy? Oh, I've got so much stuff on my desk. For each piece of bunting, each stitchery, I'm going to need three pieces of the um, actual calico. One to stitch on, one to cover it and create a number or something as it's going to be an advent calendar, and one to hide my stitching on the back, so to seal it. So every panel will need three. So I've just gone ahead and torn a heap of those. Let me get rid of all that because I really want to get into this. So all I've done so far is stamp the fabrics. 
ripped them down and whacked them on the page. I then started placing, pacing together my, um, my composition. I'm going to stay about quarter of an inch, maybe half an inch in from the side so that I have reduced my space that I have to work in a little, which is still pretty substantial. Let's say I've come in, um, yeah, half an inch from all edges and my design is now nine and a half inches by about six and a half. So that's a good size. It's not too overwhelming. It's still a smallish piece. Um, plus, let's pretend now that this completed and I'm working out how to cover it so that as part of the advent calendar concept, I'll have room for some buttons to go in the corners for this panel to go over to cover what's in behind. And then I can stitch on here uh, a one or whatever and do a bit of collaging. So I will need actually more calico because if I'm stitching on here, I'll need to hide that. Plus I can see that blue through that. So that's four pieces for every panel. So that would be the one I stitch on. That's the backing to hide all my stitching. Then a button comes through to hide the advent side of things. I unbutton it and fold it up and pop it away. Now, one lady did suggest, which I thought was a pretty good idea, is on the back here, I have a pocket for that to go in. So I need to have a think about that. My only concern, because straight away I was like, yes, stroke of genius, but it's going to add more weight. The pocket is just more, and maybe it's better that it actually gets lighter and lighter as these pieces come off. And I can always just pull these off, leave them nice and flat, and just slide them back into the book cover until, you know, after Christmas when it's time to take the bunting down and put it back into my journal cover. All my pieces are here, and I can just rebutton them and slide them back into my book. So I think that's how I'm going to go. Anyway, that's the mechanics of it. And I'm staying on the idea I had where, you know, I create this bunting. I'm still unsure about this colors and where I'll go. Let me bring that into shot because green is an issue for me. Holly, I think it will pop up, but I'm going to try and find greens that fit with this palette of colors in this, in this jelly roll. So they need to be a soft, sort of tone of green, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Maybe I, I won't miss it. I don't know. We'll see. This was another piece of red fabric I picked up too. I love that um, that check. It's just, to me, so Christmas. So anyway, I digress. What am I doing here? I've got my pieces of fabric. I've stamped. I've placed keeping it simple because it's all about the stitching. Now I'm working on a bit of a feature here. I've got this um, wool, felted wool, and I've got a couple colors that I think I can blend in. And as I mentioned in the last video, my first one, I've got some poinsettia flowers and I'm wanting to sort of snip out of them some of the fabrics that could potentially be used within my um, piece. I'm off camera, so I'm just bringing that back into shot. So I'm just, I cut a little shape out of a, a petal. And we're going to make a little 3D um, flower here at, down in the bottom corner. And then around from that flower, I'll do some embroidery and some beading and buttons and, you know, the usual, all that stuff that we add in. See, that one's got a little bit of glitter on it, so I'm loving that. So let's just work a few of these random petals in. I think we need another glittery one. Okay. I've got some lace. This um, little scallopy piece of lace that you can see here is from a collar. 
that I've had kicking around. It's not vintage, it's not old, but it's got that scallop shape. And I thought, well, that sort of works with these petals. When I cut my little petal out, I just squared up the bottom a little bit to give um, something to sort of tuck into each other. So it's sort of like a, as I was cutting it out too, the first one I sort of sketched onto some felt, I sort of felt like it could be uh, a light bulb. When you turn it up the other way, it's a light bulb. And I noticed that Rachel is doing some little string of lights across her, her reindeer antlers, which is just classic Christmas imagery is the reindeer's antlers have got um, caught in the light bulb. So if you wanted to extend on that idea, you could easily use these little decorative pieces to create a string of Christmas lights across the top of your piece. It's just a, another random idea I thought of. And I did even consider doing it through this one, but I, I really want to have a go at making a poinsettia flower. And I think this will be a really easy little flower and it may pop up from time to time through the whole project, sort of bringing a little bit of continuity to the design of my piece, having a, a poinsettia of numerous combinations of fabrics and textiles just popping up throughout the whole piece is my thought anyway. Who knows where this will go? Like it's day one of the project. We're going to be just bombarded with some beautiful imagery from uh, everyone posting their creations. And it will literally send us off on all sorts of tangents in our, our brains. So, you know, I'm just trying to keep a, an open mind and go with the flow. Because I think this project is going to be epic. I think everyone is going to thoroughly enjoy this. I can see the energy. I keep going off site with this cutting. I do apologize. And I can see the momentum building through the year of what everyone's doing. And it was just oh, fantastic. So there's my little flower. Slide that into there. That's it. I might bring that one forward because he's got that glitter and the one that without glitter, he can sit at the back. We might as well take advantage of that shimmer. That's the other thing too. There's nothing stopping us adding glitter to our piece to get a little shimmer. If you don't have fabrics in your stash already that you can use, let me just tuck that in and that one. Let's see if I can find some more scrolly shapes. Uh, yeah, it needs to be. I keep going off camera. I'm so sorry, guys. Little hints of lace. What else have we got here? That's really scrappy. <clears throat> As you can tell, I'm a little bit excited about all this. I'm looking at this little piece here. It's sort of got a different shape to what I'm used. I might take that whole bit out. And then maybe I can get that little guy A little guy off of there as well as the outer edge and maybe he can just sort of tuck in it's just rough placement at the moment I'll um, fiddle with it more oh yeah I'm loving that okay well, I need more of that lace I think I might get another one of that fellow that comes off that side. Because I like how it's got more of a leaf-like effect, more than a petal. So it just breaks it up. And I might bring that one off of there. 
Yeah, I like that. Okay, happy with that. Where's my pins? Here's my pins. I'm just going to, at the moment, just stab, oops, bad pin. Stab that with some pins just to hold it. And then when I get the camera off, I can sort of fiddle with it a bit more and um, pop a few stitches to hold it. I'll try and keep it a little bit 3D-ish too. So not stitch out here on the outer edge so that it's sort of a little bit fluffy and then fill the center with some pearls and things like that, I think. Because I really like how that pin is sitting there. See that pearl pin? I really like that. So I think pearls in here would be very pretty and the odd little blue bead or something. Okay, I still haven't put my stripe in. Maybe I could slide. A little piece of stripe under my flower. Oh, I love these colors. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm traditional Christmas through and through, reds and golds and a hint of green. I think that's what's really jiggering me up is I'm a classic Christmas color scheme, but my actual Christmas tree theme and my colours that are on the wreath on my front door are these tones, that Tiffany blue and white. Um, so I sort of like that. So I really, to make it all matchy-matchy, I really should stay within those tones and then um, um, have it all, you know, themed. But I don't know, I still tend to sneak out some pieces and put a table runner down that's reds and ah oh, burgundy and gold love burgundy and gold so i tend to sort of play a little bit with um color even though i've got a themed christmas tree i'm just looking at this lace again i think i want a little bit more of this and i'm wondering if a bigger piece just spilling out from the flower. The flower feels a little bit posed. Does that make sense? So I'm just gonna snip a bigger chunk of this off. And I'll have a little play with it. I'll just tidy that up and get rid of that edge. So I don't think I need that. Now, my plan is to do the 12. But if I really want to be a, an advent calendar in the sense of an advent calendar, I probably need to actually do 25, which is just mammoth task. So I sort of started talking myself out of it. But when I sat down to do this one and realized that it's not as big as I probably thought it might be, as in area, and I don't have to like make every piece full on. Sometimes it's good to take a breath in your stitching. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I like that. I might move that one. I like how that's just a bit random for the flower to nestle on. It just breaks up that circular blob was all I was seeing. And I might have him come up there yeah much better yes love it let's stab that down before it moves um so what was i saying yeah because i potentially need 25 um i think i will when i get a theme like reindeer and i can think of two or three designs off the top of my head and i can't decide what i'm going to do i'm just going to place them all out and just pin them and as the month goes on if I come together with one really quickly um, I will grab out a, a second reindeer and it's at least pinned or you know invisible stitched down so that I can just pick it up and go for it so when I was planning this I was looking at the Christmas stockings that I'd grabbed and was um, considering 
you know, pilfering fabrics and textiles, for example, and imagery from Christmas stockings. And there's one of them in there that it's got that hessiany um, linen sort of fabric. I'll grab it in a minute. And I was like, oh, I don't even need a stamp fabric. Here's one ready to go. But I still wanted to try the fabric stamping. So I'm going to actually do a second panel um, using that stocking as my um, base and then see where it goes. So I'll just pin this and um, that way I know it's all secure. I should be able to lift that with those pins directly down into that fabric. I don't think I need any more any more of that in there. So I'll put it aside. I've got a couple snippets of fabric left. Do I need do I need anything over there? I like opposites with placement of fabrics, like the stripe and the stripe. That to me is enough in the center, but I'm wondering if I need just a little bit of this guy. Um, the Jelly Roll has a pinking sheer edge. It stops it from fraying when they cut the fabric with a little, little pinking sheer cut. I don't know if you can see it. I'll bring it up, see how it's all zigzaggy. Um, I could trim that off, but I'm actually gonna leave it. I like how it just brings a little, a little pop of, I don't know, a little extra design element, if you will. Yeah, I'm going to pop that over there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Just a little hint. I might spin it around so I get that white little flower there. Okay. I don't know what stitching I'll do. Probably a lot of um, boro stitching, just rows and rows and my classic seed stitch because when I don't want to think and I just want to stitch the go-to stitch is seed stitch and it just does such a beautiful textured feeling um, I'm happy with that that came together pretty quickly and all using my jelly roll so I'm just going to lift that up if I can and that should hold and I will uh, take that away and start pinning that down. So I just want to grab a second panel because I'm going to need as many as I can make. And have a look at this stocking. It's got a, quite a few elements. I think um, this in itself could be used somewhere. Special delivery, perfect. But I'm really digging this. So I'm going to attempt to cut it out or do I rip that how well did the factory make that let me just release that seam yeah that's going to come out okay so I'm just snip snip I'm going to piece together this one and it's going to be a combination of reds this time and this will be my feature panel won't that 25 be great for the last day of the bunting, the 25th? So you could even have a look out there at Christmas hats because often embroidered onto Christmas hats will be um, the word Merry Christmas. They're often made of interesting fabrics in all sorts of colours. So that would be a really economical way of getting yourself um, some velvet or velveteen or some plush is um, a Christmas hat. Okay, that might be enough to unpick for now. Okay, so there's a, a quilted fabric on the back. It's interesting. So I'm going to attempt to cut through there because I'll save that Christmas, uh, that special delivery message for a rainy day, because it could just be put in anywhere. And I will, because these videos are gonna probably be long. How about, I've been at it 24 minutes already. 
I don't mind them going to an hour because, you know, you probably don't like them an hour because I'm just taking up your day when you've probably got better things to do. So I like to keep them around 40 minutes. So I'm trying to go as fast as I can here. Let's piece this one in. Um, when I come back, I think I'll have it stitched. I don't think there's anything super cool that I'm going to do in the way of stitching that you haven't already seen throughout this whole project. <clears throat> so it'll just, like I said, be simple, simple stitching. It's all about the fabrics this time, I think. Yeah, I'm loving that. Do I need that wadding on the back? Probably not. It's all weight. Yep, that's gone. Got some interesting linen there. So that um, stocking, I think, is going to be the gift that keeps giving. Okay. All right, so tuck that out of the way. Got some wadding. All right. Reindeer Express. So let's just put it a little bit off center. Let's get in amongst the reds. What have we got here? Oh, I love that holly. I uh, don't know if you can see. See the holly? Let's grab a chunk of that. I'm getting a fairly big piece of it because the design is um, quite spread out. When you've got designs that are close together, say like that, save them for little bits. Oh, look at the little holly there. Oh, I'm going to trim that off because that in itself is a little element that could go somewhere, that little holly. And I'm just going to put it to one side for a minute. So what have we got here? Let's get that up the top corner. Okay, what else can we use? Some more reds. I'm aiming for all the selvage edges first. I uh, don't like that one. That's too busy. Oh, you can't even see. Let me just move over a fraction. Oh, look at that. Oh. I just want to use them all on my first piece. It's like a kid in a candy store. There's going to be all these references to Christmas. You guys are going to be sick of me by the end of this. What else have we got here? gone all quiet I'm thinking I'm contemplating I like how that's all frayed there so I might just go up here what else do I need I need what do I need Maybe some of this. Yeah. I love this. Maybe we cut a piece of that off so that we've got it at hand. I couldn't sleep last night. I was thinking so much about this project. It didn't help that I had a ginger beer about an hour before bed. And that's like putting rocket fuel into me. I dare not have a coffee. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon. No coffees after that time because it just, ugh. i am uh, got high energy as it is and it takes a bit for my brain to switch off and allow me to have rest. So to put a coffee in is just crazy. So um, yeah, I just really struggled to rest last night. And I think it was because of all this 
thinking. Might even put that on there. No, do I put that on there? What I'm what I'm doing is I'm clustering the fabrics from this corner. I'm thinking, and this becomes quite plain over here. So sort of building it up and then drifting it out. So that's where I'm I'm heading design wise. Need something there. So yeah. Anyway, like I was saying last night, I ended up having a. Um, ginger beer and that's just rocket fuel oh, I love that but I'm struggling to work out where to cut it because of the way they've designed it if I cut through here I've lost that but does that matter no it doesn't matter see that there is pretty in itself but we'll have to do a straight line like a patchwork feel that I'm going for that would be good as a feature piece. If I was building another flower somewhere, that there would be fantastic to build something. But I'm gonna cut it through here so that those dots become just dots. I still have a feature here and a feature there. I'll trim off the salvage. Gee, these motor fabrics are beautiful. And having the color palette to sort of confine me, I think it's a really good idea. Like I was disappointed, I must admit, because I'm like, oh, is it a cop out? I've, um, you know, got a color palette and it's limiting, limiting me and, you know, all these silly thoughts went through my head. But I'm sort of thinking it's probably a good idea because otherwise I just will get, it'll get out of control. So I'm sort of pleased that I'm going to cut that down. I just think it's too big. I'm pleased I do have something to confine me. Otherwise, you can literally spend hours rolling around in your craft room trying to pull something together because, I don't know, maybe that's just me. I'm sure some of you out there will know what I'm talking about. Where it just is silly because there's just too much too much going on you know this here that needs a feature like text or I wonder um, I really want to use that flower too but maybe I don't need him no I'll just leave him I'm just look thinking this stamp maybe Maybe I print the word believe because we're doing reindeers. So we're believing that they're coming with parcels for us connected to Santa and it's an express. I might print maybe that word or even Merry Christmas or yeah, I'll have a think about that. And I'm going to do something here like a, a little smaller. Where's a piece of calico? That... Oh gosh, where is the calico? <laughs> oh, hokey frost. I had scrap calico and I put it aside going, you will need that, keep it handy. Here it is, here it is. There's some little bits in here like that. And I still have my stays on ink. I still have my stamping pad. I'm gonna move that over a little bit. So, I think, let me get some of these stamps out and we'll just, I was thinking believe, that could work. Let's just stamp it and see how it comes up. It's like Christmas has exploded. I'm going to grab my book to give me a softer surface whenever you're stamping um onto fabric give use a book or yeah a book's really good book pages it just is a little spongy and allows the fabric to mold around mold around your ink and the stamp and then just hold it for a second just think you've got a moist surface 
going on to probably the fabric that's got even a little bit of starch in it. Give it a second to um, do its thing and soak into your fibers of your fabric. Don't be too quick to, um, you know, remove it. And then give your stamp a bit of a clean, just with a, that's just the back of a napkin that I was decoupaging something. What else could we have a look at there? North Pole, Post Priority Christmas Mail, Merry Christmas. Yeah, I might just leave it at Believe. I sort of feel like that was the first thing that jumped out at me when I looked at them all. And I could justify it with a Believe in Reindeers coming. Believe they're on their way. Believe they're going to be coming to you because you've been good and not naughty. Now, I know there's some naughty ones out there, but you've always got time. As I say to the kids that come to our Christmas store, you've got time to be good for mum and dad. You've got time to redeem yourself. You know what the funniest thing is, is when a person goes through the store that resembles Santa and he's just come to get some supplies. It happens all the time. And you'll be walking through the store yourself and you'll see a gentleman in there that is like, looks very much like Mr. Santa. And then just hang back and watch kids as they walk through the store. And you'll see their eyes. They'll be with mum and dad and they're in the Christmas shop and the music's pumping and the lights are flashing and they're just, you know, thoroughly enjoying it. You can see it on their faces. And they'll come around a corner and bump into a gentleman that might have a big white beard and be a little rotundous. And, um, oh, especially if mum and dad aren't real close and they see them, you'll see them run off to find mum and dad and let them know that Santa's in the shop. It's, it's priceless. It's just beautiful. I can't find a home for that. So do I just stop? Yep, yeah, stop. I like that. By the time I add my stitching, I'm just looking up at my TV now to get a bit of a, a long view of it. By the time I add some stitching and outline a few things and then seed stitch through and bring in some, you know, I could probably bring in a little bit of lace do I have anything that's jumping out at me? What's this again? I use this all the time. I suppose I could use a piece of it. Yeah, I will. I like putting lace on the pieces, whether it be a doily or something, because it just breaks it up. It provides another texture. Okay, and I've cut cut it down a little more than the last one. I'm just going to pop that there, I think. So that might change. Yeah, I love it. I love how it's busy and clustery here and it just tapers out to very simple over here. Just gives your eye a bit of time to breathe as you sort of look at the piece hanging you'll be immediately attracted to, you know, up here in the center. So I'm loving how that's sitting. I do have salvage in that fabric, but if I give that fabric a little flick with the pin, those little holes will disappear and I'll stitch it anyway. So it doesn't really matter. A little holly pieces included okay so that's all pinned so that's two 23 to go if i'm going to do a calendar advent to 25 hope so the other thing i was thinking about too is maybe instead of i'm definitely going to attach it to a cordage or, or something that's going to be up here that these will pin to and be stitched on to make this bunting but what if I add additional buttons 
that are on the back that then connect to the bunting. Or, see, where I'm heading is what if I want to break the bunting down into, say, three units or two units, depending on where it's displayed. One year it might be a big long line along a wall down the hallway, so one continuous length. I can do that. But the next year I might want to hang three pieces in the lounge room, three pieces out in my patio, and a couple pieces somewhere else, and I can break it down into segments that can be smaller. So I'm sort of now in my head as I think about the bunting rope, working out how I can sort of have it a little bit modular. So I can build this to any design shape I want. I haven't nutted that out yet, but it is in the back of my mind to make this a little bit more universal. The other thing that I can't yet work out is how heavy this is going to going to weigh. When I pick up a journal of stitchery that we've completed prior, there's only, you know, six pieces, maybe eight pieces in it, and there's already some weight, and this has got to hang in the air. So I am a little concerned about the weight on the cordage, on the attachment points. So that is something that I'm sort of workshopping in the back of my mind as well. But we'll work through that as the videos progress. I'm sort of tidying up while I'm chatting here, getting all these useful little bits back together. Yeah, I'm just sort of got that in the back of my mind, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And it's something, the mechanics of the project, the how we're going to actually put it all together. But for now, I will just work on... Look at that, I just pin that together like that. How pretty, anyway. Um, I might as well pin that calico too, otherwise it just gets out of control. Maybe that's the start of my tag. Yeah, there you go, that'll be the tag or something. So as I said, my tag will pop up somewhere in amongst all this. It may be in the next video, it may not. And it's going to be a postcard inspired scene to um, sort of link it all together. Okay, everyone, I'm going to stop the video here. That is well and truly enough um, for you to see. And we're at 40 minutes, so I'm actually gonna stop the video completely. I'm gonna go away and spend the week stitching these pieces. And then when I come back, I will be able to show you what I did. And if I've had any more thoughts on the construction of things, um, I'll bring you up to speed and I may have even started my postcard tag concept. Okay, look after yourselves. Enjoy this project because it's going to be a hoot and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.